going into the Tekken 8 story mode. I need to preface that we are going to Tekken have story mode. Spoilers. Massive spoilers ahead. Massive spoilers. Massive spoilers ahead. So, I'm going to count to three. We're moving. Uh, no, you know what? I'm going to count down from five, and then we're going to go into, right. go into the game. Spoilers and all. Five. Spoilers four, and all. Three. Two. One. So, Quint, what did you yeah. think of Tekken 8's story mode? Okay, so I think the story mode was good up to a point. Mm -hmm. And then it was really awful. And then afterwards, it was good again. Yes. But maybe a little elongated <laughs> for my taste. Um. Mm. So, like, as soon as I was in space playing as Angel Jin against Devil Kazuya Super Form, mm -hmm. I was just like, this is the stupidest anime bullshit I've seen in most games. Mm -hmm. Like, any game I've played, pretty much. I was so tuned out to what was going on, and it just kept going. It kept going. I was like, all right, surely this is, like, the end almost. But then it went for another three chapters somehow yes. yes i was like oh my god okay yeah no i guess we're just still going mm -hmm. and then the tekken force stuff was forced forced it was horrendous i don't know if anyone even tested how it controlled because oh my god it, it was hard Yes. I, I played through the story on hard difficulty, right? Because I was like, sure, why not? I'll do it. Let's let's do it. And it was pretty easy for the most part up until like some boss fights like uh, Azazel or the te whole Tekken Force mode in general. Yes. And um, just it, it felt so disengaging, right? Because for the most part it was it was it was grounded for like a Tekken game and then you know you went to space. Yes. <laughs> well, everything before going to space was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, rest in peace Claudio and all that. <laughs> Rip. Man's man's got lasered. Got vaporized, dude. Yeah, for real. Not even the power of a Quincy could help him. For real, for real, for real, for real that was all cool though i i really enjoyed like all the, like the team up like to fight uh azazel powered kazuya like that mm -hmm. was all that was all super sick and like the mm -hmm. claudio giant arrow to like weaken him but it just goes off the rails so hard like after that that wow. it was hard for me to keep playing i was so bored i guess wow because i was just disengaged i like especially when i kept dying in tech and force so i was just like yeah oh my god this, this is such a cheap ass fucking mode like you get hit once and it's, it was just over <laughs> you're just you're just stun locked they're just like eh, 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 and just like stun locking the crap out of you and you're trying to change targets, and you're just like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Targeting basically. Like, that is uh, not that is not fun to play on an arcade stick. That that it was not designed for the arcade button layout yeah. at all. Um, this was this was played with a controller is what it was saying. But even I tried playing with a controller a little bit after I had beat it again, and I was like, this is still clunky as hell on a controller. It's just it's just yeah. poorly done. Um, like, I went from height to disappointment really fast. And I get I'm jumping around a lot, but, yeah. like, my opinions are just so mixed about the story mode, I can't help but jump around. Like, Reyna as the most two-faced-ass character in the story. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, 
she was like painfully like bro she i just was, i just want to point out she like, was can we just wild. talk about how like she's like hi huh, you use the machine it, i was like yeah man i watched a tutorial on youtube and it's just like yeah, yeah. what the fuck you're gonna buy I, that I learned that shit on like tiktok or like youtube or something all the kids are doing it <laughs> And then inner monologue, haha, I have deceived him. He fully bought that, you know, like kind of It is wild how Jin just bought it. Mm. He's like, oh yeah, I just watched some self-defense videos on YouTube. And it's like really, Jin, you and then it just moves on. Just doesn't he doesn't address it. It just moves to the next scene. And it's like yeah. explanation. Oh, okay, he bought it. Good. Mm -hmm. Jin's a dumb yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then eighty percent of the story mode is just shitting on Jin. <laughs> oh, I mean, Man, Jin, you sure have gotten weak, you fucking dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, I used to fight you and be afraid. <laughs> That's weird. Now I feel nothing. Well, I mean, like I don't know. It's just like, oh, and you play as like gimped Jin. <laughs> They like, thought it was a good idea to just remove like half of his move list when you're playing him. So you're like trying to do something. You're like, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do that either. Oh, I can't do that. Just... Well, you see, that's that's the thing. It's 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 about the story of Tekken Eight is about char Jin's character development. I I so, understand. Thematically, I understand. it's also about you forgiving Jin for starting a world war and killing millions. World War Three. He's he's a flawed guy. I love that they Come just on, brushed dude. it off. They just brushed it off. They're like, that's fine. It was just like a few million, whatever. A little world war. It's fine. It was just fine. a phase. This is our hero. This is our hero. Look how good he is now. Look at boy. Listen, guys, Lars <laughs> didn't work out. Okay, we had to <laughs> we had to back down from Jin being a war criminal. Okay, this is so instead Kazuya goes insane. <laughs> yes, he goes like uncharacteristically like yo powers everything all of a sudden. Yeah. Some anime ass anime bullshit. To kind of like recap though, for people that don't know, the story of Tekken 8 is essentially Jin's redemption arc and or his character development because a lot of Tekken uh, 4, 5, and 6, and even 7, is Jin sort of being jaded by his past and, um, you know, not able to get over the fact that he is a devil or, you know, that he has sort of um, been a bad person or whatever it may be. And so this explores the idea of, like, Jin coming to terms with that and, you know, having self-acceptance and realizing that he's not a perfect person. And sort of, you know, with that, thematically, he gains control of his devil powers and you know um breaks the chains breaks the chains not <laughs> literally and figuratively so uh, yeah uh so it's i i actually thought it was like really well done in that terms of like how they handled it's the best it's the most character development tekken has ever had for sure mm. in a character uh I enjoyed it way more than Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, yeah. so yeah, it's they, got that going for it. It is the best told story in Tekken, period. So you have to be very comfortable with playing multiple different characters. Obviously, you know, you have to learn mm -hmm. Jin, but even when you do learn Jin, you also have to realize that you're going to have to relearn him every time he learns new yeah. moves and or when he However, switches styles. However, in the final fight, he yes. plays himself. In it's... the final fight, he plays himself. I was just standing there. I wasn't even making an input, and like Kazu go to punch me, and like parry. Parry did. Like oh, okay. Oh, okay. Parry did. Um, <laughs> which is another kind of like thematic thing that is really cool. It is is there's there's layers of self acceptance that Jin has, where essentially there's a arc where he has to he loses his ability to have the devil Jin gene. Like his devil powers, yeah. Because yeah, he can't use his devil powers. He basically, it's like Spider-Man too, right? Where he's just sort of like, you know, he has like a a 
like a mental breakdown and he doesn't forgive himself for starting world war three as he shouldn't and uh you know then um has to how you did yeah i mean yeah for sure you know she was always <laughs> team Jin, but um uh he the you know minor genocide he he doesn't ex he doesn't accept himself for you know starting world war three and you know though i wish they had gone into why that was a little bit more like what was the moment that he's like yeah i don't i'm mad at myself yeah, we that. we as an audience are just supposed to accept that oh that was old gin this is new gin don't worry about it there's a lot of just wave handing and like I, yeah i didn't like that at all yeah i i felt like that was cheap and almost that Jin had a undeserved redemption. Yes, uh, to an extent, I would agree with that. I mean, like if they had done a little bit more explaining, I could see how you might accept that then. But I mean, we, they only had so much time to tell a story. And I think they... they... So him going from he, do, he, he loses his devil powers and sort of, you know, unable to fight Kazuya in, in, into realizing I have to accept myself for who I am to be able to beat my father, who is more powerful than I am, who has, you know, kind of already accepted... More powerful than a god. Accepted the Lord <laughs> Satan into his life, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, they... they wild. Yeah, um... And so, you know, then he has to go through an arc of trying to get, regain that power and, you know, um, battling his literal demon of his inner demon to gaining control of it to sort of, you know, having them work together. At will... least the checkpoint system's generous. Like when you get into like phase two or phase three of the fight, usually you will start again at that phase with some exceptions yeah there's a few Thankfully. times where like they'll just start you at the very beginning of the phases of the fight there are like reina yeah reina versus devil cause you it just starts you right at the beginning like nope i have to i just have to do this again he I just didn't... he just knocks me full screen and i i didn't i didn't struggle with that as much as i struggled with um uh, I think I struggled with the tech and force the most. That was the, that was my like the part I hated the most was the tech and force because as I, you were playing I, I through, I spent a while on tech and force. Like okay, when you played as like king, yes, when you played as king, yes. tech and force, yes, that was everything. Horrible. Just, King's like I'm gonna fight this whole army, and I'm like, are you though, King? I think I'm gonna spam heat smash and rage arts and hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because King, like, I started playing King, and it's like, okay, n and no one will get off me. I need I need space yes. to do grapples and kicks, and you kind of realize that King's fighting style would not really work that well in, like, a group, yeah. like, getting ganged up But then up they've on. added, like, a bunch of, like, different shooting characters, yes. and they've added, like, the super elite troopers, and yes. then the super elite jacks, and, Jack and you're Sevens. just like, okay, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, sure. And then you die because somebody's just punching you in the back of the head as you're, like, punching someone. <laughs> yeah. You're basically just getting jumped <laughs> the video game. Uh, yeah. I beat that literally by spamming Heat Smash. Like, that, it gave me access to yeah. it. I'm like, I'm going to use it. Yeah, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. That's what I had to do, I too. seeked out, like, any of the jacks because that seemed to, like, give me the most, like, progress towards the next part. Heat Smash. Heat Smash. Heat Smash. Heat Smash. Actually, I found that if you fight the elite guards first those mm -hmm. guys will actually die faster so you you look you lessen mm -hmm. the life bar the the the, the heat. there's like a battle gauge That's right fair. like there's like a you're yeah. winning the battle in this area but anyway uh you know why didn't you go Kuma... through too many areas too yes. many areas um but they they kind of want you to be able to play a, a plethora of characters and they do somewhat of a decent job of that like during the tournament mode yeah. that was handled really well like it's like choose who you want to yeah. win this tournament that was cool um and you play like a lot of different characters even what though... if i wanted leroy to beat Jin? <laughs> yes that someone had said in my chat while i was while i was streaming they're like pick leroy if you can and win the fight and i'm like i don't think they're gonna let me do that buddy <laughs> i wish i could yeah. i didn't either i i was like i'm not gonna be able to pick leroy against Jin. it's not gonna happen yeah um and, and as expected it didn't happen but but it i was mean, fun to death fist thing as paul though because the computer just didn't block it. You're just like, Bruh! and they just ate it. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and I mean, but overall, like, I think, you know, the thematics of the story were great, just maybe not the gameplay execution. It felt very sort of crammed yeah. in and sort of just like, we, we got to get as much in here as we can. Very yeah. cool, but pacing wise all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. I still think it's like the best fighting game story, though. Like, that's would... like such a low bar, right? But at the yeah. same time, you know, it, you know, I passed that bar and it's probably the best fighting game story. It, it is honestly up there. Because they actually tried. Yes, <laughs> they really did. They didn't they didn't go full clown shoes with it. And they yeah. actually tried. Like MK1. Yes, like MK. Well, I mean, I liked MK1. Do I think it could have been paced better? I, I think that's the one thing oh, MK does sure. better. Like story pacing, it it's it it could have been to that level, but it really wasn't wasn't there. Um yeah. I did think that Jin's like character development was the best in the series we've ever seen. And in that last fight with Kazuya that you have, the idea of him going from his old styles and accepting himself as, for who he was uh, you know, like accepting his Mishima style, his Kazama style of like passive. Yeah. And then, you know, his like, his, good. his like, and then you, he, it kind of was like a little bit of a callback to Tekken 3, Tekken 4, Tekken 5, and you know, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And even Devil Jin and that stuff too, which the, Ka the Kazama style is cool because it also like you never got to see him training with his mother and play that fighting style that he had. Yeah, it exactly. Because Heihachi forced him to forget it and use the Mishima style. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, even there's another a... big point in the story's favor. Yeah. Is how much other characters also got to shine and have their own like little developments. Like usually our Tekken stories are just like laser focused on like one character, two characters. But this time, you know, you had like Leo doing stuff king doing stuff paul doing stuff like all the characters in the story were able to have like their own moments to like shine and get things done which yeah. was very refreshing absolutely um also, I will say that like something that i was a little upset about was how little jun actually was a part of the story like so they made sure her she seem... actually exists uh, she does. She does exist. If you, so, does she? Okay. She does. There's an explanation. Oh, for we it. we saw her foot. We saw her foot at the end of the Kazuya Jin fight. Okay, so if you haven't done so yet, I recommend that you go and play her side story. It, it's it's a, yeah, it's, it's, a it's a it's a cutscene. So it, it explains what happened to her. But okay. the the problem is is that should have been a part of the story. Okay, but yeah, I don't, fair. I don't, fair. for whatever reason, I think it was cut. She mm -hmm. was, she was sort of like being sold, and you know, it's like watching a movie trailer, right? Like, if you watch the Tekken 8 yeah. movie trailer, you would say to me, Oh, yeah, Jun's a part of the story, she's coming back. Yeah, that didn't really happen. There wasn't a moment where it's like, no. I'm alive. No, I think, I think <laughs> they're saving that for Tekken 9. Is there any mm -hmm. sort of like, it really story points that you want to bring up as well. Like I, I feel like I've been talking way too much right now. Um, no, not really. Like I, I thought the story was good. I liked character having characters, having moments and stuff like that. It was all really cool. Mm -hmm. And other than the pacing, the story was solid and space didn't like space. Yeah, I'll, I'll never give in on that. I thought that was dumb as hell. That, that that's fine. <laughs> I I mean I'm personally I'm cool with the you know I love the anime like I've always loved Tekken's anime aspect to it like it just going full mm. crazy. I love Devil May Cry. Yeah. I like Saint Seiya. You know these things, and so I want to see giant stupid space battles. You know. Um, I can I can see why they highlighted certain parts of the story the way they did. Mm -hmm. Like in every trailer, they were highlighting the beginning of the story with like um, Jin versus Kazuya in the city, which was really cool. And then they were also highlighting the final battle at the end. Yeah, where they're both exhausted. Actual gameplay footage, by the way. Wink. 
I, I did. I did make. I think I that was funny. I still feel a little bait and switched by that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still a little salty that it was just like story nonsense. Cutscenes. Whatever. Who knew <laughs> the very first footage we would get of the game was the very last battle? Like that is crazy. I kind of had a hunch that it was. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. Because like they both look exhausted in that, and they're and um, like Kazuya didn't have like any of his devilisms or anything like that. People pointed out. I was like, oh yeah, now you right. And they were just brawling. It seemed like a very end of a story kind of fight. Mm -hmm. I so I, I also want to take a moment. To, to kind of gloat a little bit, if you don't mind. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, gloat away. I made some predictions before the game came out, and all most of them came true. And I... Most of mine did, too. Yeah. Um, I want to say that the character development I I had, you know, read on uh, Jin's, from Jin's trailer, I have a video on that on, on TikTok. I had, you know, made a prediction of, like, what these things mean in his play style and most all of it was true most all of that like happened like it his fighting style was a sign of his uh you know his character development and uh and which i loved i and so like as soon as i saw that i was so happy i was like damn i i i i, I, I was able to read that nailed it nailed it um also the idea of you know, I, I mean, I had said some things like I thought like Jun was going to come back and there was like an angelic aspect to it. I mean, that was kind of true, but like I was hoping kinda, yeah. that would be a bigger part of that story, man. I really did. Um, I wish you actually had like been the crux of the story. Like that would have uh, been nice. Uh, um, OK, so here. How about this? Let me let me throw this idea at you. One of my biggest guesses was wrong, though. Jim... I, I thought Reyna was going to be the final boss. Yeah, I thought so too. Actually, in like in a devil form, I yes. I thought Reyna was going to be the final boss. I I was like ninety nine percent sure that she had the devil gene in some capacity, which was of course confirmed. Yeah. So I was like, okay, nailed it, of course. But I honestly thought she would be like the final final boss, which I guess she's still going to be like, but maybe later because at the end we see her in her devil form and she's the only one left with the devil powers yes so she'll be a natural enemy of you know the world it's a world though yeah, yeah um, the world though. uh so the the i i definitely don't like i personally don't like reyna as a character I think she, she kind of sucks. Very abrasive. Yeah. Um, she she Divisive. Like, you, you could see right through her the whole time, and I wish they kind of yeah. did a little bit more of a better job to, like, conceal who she was. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of fun watching Jin kind of, like, piece stuff together, right? Like, oh... Wait, she uses Mishima style. That's freaking weird. <laughs> I watched some YouTube videos. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Okay, that's fine. All right, all right, whatever, Reina. <laughs> Moving on. One of the newest TikTok trends, Mishima style. Mishima style. Oh, I, I've seen that. Um, what what do you think about like the devil, uh, like Azazel being like the creator of the devils in general? They were like servants to him. I think that's kind of so dumb. I actually liked it because mm -hmm. it gave Azazel more like um, story relevance, mm -hmm. right? Before it's just like, ah, we're fighting Azazel, right? Azazel's an asshole. Okay, cool. Why? And then now, like, we learn, oh, yeah, no, like, Azazel gave people the devil gene. They are his servants, and so it gave more agency, I guess, to Azazel and the story as a whole. Yeah. And also, still kind of weird how, like, Kazuya was able to beat a god, but whatever. Well, you see, once you're a Mishima, you're instantly yeah. a badass. I just want to put it's that true. out there. Like, it's true. 
Okay, and also, like, this just goes to show how much of a badass uh, Heihachi is, because, dude... He fought that shit. <laughs> not only did he fight that shit on multiple occasions, he fought, like, demons, but he was also thrown down a volcano and didn't have to make a deal with a devil to survive. Dude just climbed back on volition, okay? Yeah. You know what didn't I mean? Didn't climb back the second time, though. De well, no. But, um, <laughs> like, odds were stacked against him. And, and Lars sort of is the same way. Um, yeah. uh, also, the aspect of Reyna being younger than Jin, but somehow still having nothing, a death. That, does not, sense sense. that does not make sense. That does not make sense. Nothing makes sense with Reyna. Nothing makes sense. Did, like, Heihachi have a type? Devil Gene people? Like, <laughs> was that his type? So Exactly. If you were to give Tekken 8 a rating uh, of 1 to 10, what would you give it? Honestly, I'm going to give it an 8. God damn it. Yeah. Uh, how do I give it? Because, I... like, the network problems, uh, my issues with the story and some of the characters... Uh, my issues with the current balancing of the heat system, mm -hmm. as well as the, I guess, general optimizations of the game. I just, I just have to kind of like keep pulling it down. I'm like, well, this could have been a lot better. Yeah. This could have been a lot better. Mm -hmm. This could have been a lot better. And I've just kind of like ended up at an eight. It's still a really good game with an amazing potential to grow. Yep. And I think it could easily become like a nine or a 9.5. I don't really believe in a 10 for the most part, but yeah. I, I think it could end up being like a 9.5. I think we could just watch this game grow for years to come i would honestly i'm i think i'm gonna give it an 8.5 i think it's a good game i think i enjoyed the story mode more even even you know despite its flaws which it has many um i think the gameplay is great i play this game literally almost every day or every other day um it's it's great i think it's it's the best fighting game out there right now um Oh, that's a that's a tall statement, but I, I, I it is. I, I think I, I think it's up there with agree. Street Fighter. I think it's up there with Street Fighter Six as one of the best fighting games out there right now.